I know you've been watching the news. But most of the action is in the north, hundreds of miles away. Our gear is collecting dust. It's just mud and bugs down here. We're finding things to do and staying out of trouble. If it does find us, our guys are tough as nails, and we're ready to get in the fight. But don't worry. We're rangers. This is what we do. I love you, Chloe, very much. I'll be home soon. A few moments ago, I placed a wreath at the tomb of the unknown soldier. And as I stepped back and stood during the moment of silence that followed, I said a small prayer. And it occurred to me that each of my predecessors has had a similar moment, and I wondered if our prayers weren't very much the same, if not identical. We celebrate Veterans Day on the anniversary of the armistice that ended World War I. The armistice that began on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And I wonder, in fact, if all Americans' prayers aren't the same as those I mentioned a moment ago. For all we can ever do for our heroes is remember them and remember what they did. And memories are transmitted through words. We see these soldiers in our mind as old and wise. We see them as something like the founding fathers, grave and gray-haired. But most of them were boys when they died, and they gave up two lives, the one they were living and the one they would have lived. When they died, they gave up their chance to be husbands and fathers and grandfathers. They gave up their chance to be revered old men. They gave up everything for our country, for us. And all we can do is remember. There's always someone who is remembering for us. No matter what time of year it is or what time of day, there are always people who come to this cemetery, leave a flag or a flower or a little rock on a headstone. And they stop, bow their heads, and communicate what they wished to communicate. I think sometimes of General Matthew Ridgway, who, the night before D-Day, tossed sleepless on his cot and talked to the Lord and listened for the promise that God made to Joshua. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. We are surrounded today by the debt of our wars. We owe them a debt we can never repay. All we can do is remember them, what they did, and why they had to be brave for us. All we can do is try to see that other young men never have to join. Today as never before, we must pledge to remember the things that will continue the peace. Today as never before, we must pray for God's help in broadening and deepening the peace we enjoy. Let us pray for freedom and justice in a more stable world. And let us make a compact today with the dead a promise in the words for which General Ridgway listened, I will not fail thee nor forsake thee.